Hello and welcome to Ferris Sports Update. I'm your host, Rob Bentley, and thanks for tuning in. On today's show, we'll talk Bulldog hockey. We'll also check in with the Ferris State men's and basket, women's basketball team, all three teams in action here this past weekend. We'll start first, though, with Bulldog hockey, joined by senior forward Cole Norris. Cole, uh, welcome to the show. Thanks for having me, Rob. Before we get into talking about this uh, past weekend and what's coming up next uh, for you, uh, now 13 games in or so here in your, your senior season, uh, how nice has it been just to be able to play uh, with everything that's going on? No, it's been awesome to play. Honestly, right now with everything going on, you can't take anything for granted. And we got 13 games in, which we should get, should get about 20, 25, depending on how long the season goes. But I mean, all of us are just happy right now to be playing and all the effort that everyone's put in here at Ferris to put this thing forward and stuff. Talking about that effort, how uh, unusual has this year been uh, for you? Obviously, uh, your your fourth year here at college hockey. Yeah, it's been it's been different this year. I mean, with everything with the quarantines, when we have positive tests and contact tracing, I think I've been quarantined eight times this year. So. Stuff has been a little bit different, but um, like I said, we're just trying to enjoy as much as we can and um, take advantage of all the opportunity that we have right now. So we go to some of the highlights. We'll go back to this past weekend. Uh, took on Northern Michigan, second straight weekend on the road, and uh, kind of the life of a, a hockey player playing a lot of games on the road. Yeah. Honestly, a lot of guys like being on the road. It's time to spend uh, with your teammates more. You're in more secluded, and um, I always enjoy being on the road. Obviously, uh, here uh, in the Friday game, they got off to a quick start, a goal 33 seconds in, but you guys came back in uh, three goals uh, here in the first period to take a little lead. Yeah, we thought we gave a pretty good effort here, good pushback after they scored the first goal, but um, kind of let it go as the game went on. But um, it was good resiliency by us to fight back in the first and then obviously slept, slept away a little bit. Obviously, a lot of young guys. Uh, you're one of the leaders uh, here on this year's team. Uh, what do you try to instill in some of those younger players? I think a lot of it's just probably work habits and uh, the defensive zone and um, getting adjusted to the college game. I mean, we have 10, 11 freshmen that are all very talented, but it's a jump from junior hockey no matter what league you play in. So I think of the, a lot of things that we try to instill is hard work and play away from the puck and um, just taking that uh, jump strength wise too. How different was it uh, playing here in Northern Michigan as we see them get the goal right there, uh, playing with no fans uh, here this past weekend? Yeah, it was a little odd. I mean, lately we obviously got to play with some fans, so it was a little bit different playing in an empty building, but um, still when you're out there, I mean, you notice it, but at the end of the day, it's you're pretty much focused on the ice. Going into the second period here, they get the goal. Uh, maybe what were some keys as you came back uh, here in this third period and, and try to get a win? Um, I think between between the second and third, we just talked about working hard. We got kind of aware from our game, turned some pucks over. They have an Olympic sheet there where the ice is a little bit bigger, so they're really good off the rush. And if you turn pucks over, allow them to get in the power play, pucks probably going to end up in your net a little bit more. So I think we kind of got away from that in the second period. In the third, we try to uh, contain that a little bit more. Obviously, a uh, power play, uh, maybe not the uh, strongest suit for the Bulldogs this past weekend, but the penalty kill, you guys uh, did not allow our power play goal here on the weekend. Yeah, uh, we thought the power play was good. I mean, obviously, on the Olympic sheet, there's a lot more time and space, but it's the way you have to contain them, keep them outside the dots, and try to pack the house in. Obviously, a 5-4 game, and uh, you would played Northern Michigan a couple times in non-conference games earlier in the year, and uh, all, all the games that have been played thus far have kind of been like this. Yeah, they're not the most physically demanding team, but they're really good off the rush, especially when they play at home on their Olympic sheet. Um, they have a lot of smaller guys, skilled forwards that can move. So off the rush, it's really an off the rush game for both teams, and you got to take advantage when you have it. Going uh, into Saturday night's game, uh, any changes that uh, you guys hope to make uh, going into night number two? Um, fr we didn't. We didn't think we played well on Friday. We had a meeting fr Saturday morning about our game, and really thought that although offensively we had four goals, we didn't think we played very well away from the puck. And going into Saturday, we thought we needed to put more of a better effort for as far as competing away from the puck and heavy on pucks and stuff like that. Here, uh, num night number two, uh, they'll get the, the first goal, but uh, again, you guys come back and uh, you get a, an equalizer uh, right away, uh, not too long after that. Yeah, I mean, this is one of the things, especially with a young team, when you go down early, you got to find a way to bounce back, because once you get in a little bit of a hole, it's tough and um, clawing back and stuff like that. Obviously, this game, uh, a few more penalties than maybe the night before. Did that uh, have an impact uh, here on the outcome? Yeah, well, um, I think in a way for both teams, it's equal playing field for both teams, but it's definitely hard, especially for some guys, whether you play PK, PP, um, ice time kind of varies and stuff like that, but at the end of the day, you got to take advantage of when you have PPs and games like this, and the PK has got to be good. This game was scoreless in the first, and then here's their first goal. Uh, but uh, again, as we mentioned, you guys come right back as Justin McKaylee will get his uh, second goal of the weekend. Yeah, he's been good. He's been really good. He's been opportunist lately. He doesn't need a lot of chances, but when he has one like this, it's in the back of the net right now. So he's, uh, he's playing good right now. Obviously, uh, on the weekend, uh, as we see a replay of uh, his goal right here, uh, Northern Michigan will come back, uh, get two goals, and uh, you'll have to rally here in the third, but uh, again, made a great push uh, in this third period. Yeah, once again, we're just talking about the resiliency, try to fight back after being down a couple goals. So I thought we did a good job um, of coming back, but we need to find ways to not be in these holes and these deficits going into third periods. That's one thing that uh, you've certainly proven uh, here over the course of the year. You've been able to score goals here, uh, you know, almost every night. Yeah, scoring has been the problem for us at all. Right now, it's the mistakes that we are making 
they're, they're big ones. They're ending up in the back of our net. So right now, we don't really think goal, goal scoring is not the issue right now. It's more the play away from the puck, whether it be turning a puck over or a play in the defensive zone. But the plays that, mistakes that we're making right now are costing us. Mitch Dillster with the goal right there, a freshman that's uh, talented and had a big impact on the lineup. Yeah, no, he's been good too as far as uh, offensive play. We still got to work on his play away from the puck in the defensive zone, but that's why you got four years here, so he's been good so far. You're a big goal with uh, just under three minutes left from Jake Transit and uh, got you right back in it as you try to make a push for that uh, equalizer here going down the stretch. Yeah, both nights we uh, we made a push towards the end. I think both nights were within a, within a goal with under a minute left and didn't get one six on five the other night, but something we got to try to improve on too. Obviously, a couple one-goal games essentially right there. Uh, besides the empty net goal at the end, uh, how frustrating maybe is that to, if you don't get the results you want and, and continue to push as you look at the rest of the schedule? Yeah, no, it's definitely frustrating. I mean, we don't think we deserve, or I don't think we need. We're, we're a winning team right now. We don't have a, a record above 500, but I definitely don't deserve. Think we deserve the record we have right now. We're playing good enough hockey to where we should have some wins right now. And right now, it's coming down to a lot of small things um, that we need to bear down on and stuff. After a couple of weekends here on the road, now you got a, a big home stretch here, uh, four games, counting an early week game here against Michigan Tech, and then Bemidji State this weekend, and then another game against Michigan Tech. Going to be nice to play in, in front of some of the fans at home. Yeah, it'll be good. We like playing at home. Um, the travel is obviously not as stressful and stuff. We've got, got four games, six games here coming up pretty quick, so the turnaround is going to be good for recovery, or not good for recovery and stuff, but um, it's team, things both teams are dealing with. So. Obviously, uh, this past week uh, you were named uh, captain uh, here for the Bulldogs. What, what does that mean uh, to have that C on your chest? Oh, it's a it's a great honor. I mean, I think Liam McDougall has done a great job here so far, and we've had some great captains over the years and decades here at Ferris. So to wear that C on my chest, it, it means a great deal to me and lead by example and lead off the ice. So I'm not really necessarily going to change the way I've been acting this year. I think that's what's put me in this kind of spot. So, But it's, it's a good feeling to get rewarded for that. Obviously a big month uh, here as you try to make a push for the postseason uh, here and uh, a lot of home games is certainly going to help help the cause uh, moving forward here in the month of February. Yeah, definitely. We, we for sure like playing on our home ice better than, we, better than on the away sheet. So for us to really make a push here, we're going to have to bear it on at home and uh, play good defensively and really make a push here. How competitive uh, has the WCHA been this year? Obviously with uh, a lot of teams, uh, as we've seen you guys throughout the season, uh, a lot of close games uh, here in the conference slate. Yeah, it's been super close. I mean, we look at the standings right now, besides probably the top two teams, there's not a lot of separation between everyone. And I mean, every week there's Minnesota, Minnesota State that's ranked, Bowling Green that's ranked, Michigan Tech that's ranked, Bemidji that's ranked. So it's been really competitive this year. What will be some keys uh, for you guys in this home stretch here to get, get some wins? Uh, I think the games with Bemidji, they play a similar style to us. Typically, like to play really tight defensively, so it's going to come down to a battle of who can play that game better. And we play against Michigan Tech here, it's going to be a battle of intangibles and um, small percentage plays and stuff like that, and who bears down more, I think. Well, Cole, thanks for being with us here today, and uh, best of luck to the Bulldogs here, and uh, hopefully some fans can come out and watch you guys play. Thanks, Rob. Appreciate it. We'll be back with more Ferris Sports Update right after this.